Hi guys, my name is Fergus and if we were in something approaching normal times we would all be at Dunblane at the moment and we would be doing sectionals and playing in various ensembles but we're not, we're here. So here's a little bit of a, a, a taste of what you might be doing if we were at Dunblane. We're going to start with a little bit of warming up. Okay, so let's um, shake our hands out, everybody. You know, you can shake them out straight forward or up and down. Let's get them out to the side, up to the top. Now let's stretch our fingers out. Okay, you can connect with your inner tree. Uh, maybe out to the side. Okay, and then let's rub our hands together. Okay, and then let's all clap. Ready? Did I catch you? <laughs> now, okay, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to count to three and then we're all going to jump. Ready? So, one, two, three, jump! Okay, and again, one, two, three, jump! Okay, so hopefully we're now feeling nicely warmed up. Next thing we're going to talk about is breathing. Obviously we play brass instruments, so we need to be able to really get lots of air into our lungs. So for this, we're going to say the word, whoa! Okay, nice and round open mouth and Whoa, like you've just seen something really amazing. Okay, now obviously you're thinking to yourself, hang on, if you're saying whoa, then the air's going out the way. That's right. So what we need to do is say whoa backwards. Okay, so it's going to sound like this. Okay, now we're going to do a little exercise with this. We're going to breathe in saying whoa. We're going to breathe in for four beats. Okay, then we're going to breathe out and we're going to make a sound as we're breathing out. You're going to imagine this, the sound of water landing in a hot metal pan. It's going to go like that, okay? We're going to make that sound for eight, then we're going to breathe in again for four, breathe out for ten, breathe in for four, breathe out for twelve. Okay, ready? Here we go. So, breathing in. Breathing in. Breathing in. Okay, now, you'll probably find, like me, that you have a little bit of air left over. I find that with that exercise, by the time it gets to the third breath in, or sometimes even the second, I really feel like I'm absolutely filling my body up with air. So, next thing we'll do is a little bit of um, a C major scale. So here we go, four beats in each note. If you're playing tenor horn, this is going to be D major. So you're going to have to play F sharp and C sharp. One, two, three. Okay, now, Pump and Circumstance, March number four. Okay, there are four horn parts in this piece. Uh, they're not easy, but they're not massively difficult. If I was coaching you and you said to me, I don't think I can play these parts, I would probably suggest that you play second or fourth, and I would show you the bits of it that you can play, because a lot of it is actually easier than you think. It looks really complicated. Um, because there's so much detail in there, but actually a lot of it is just notes on the beat. But if you don't fancy that and um, you'd like to do the alternative, there is the beginner horn part, um, which is great. It's just a really simple version of the piece. Just watch out, there's a funny thing at the end of this bit here, it comes again later in the piece, where somebody's written a number one over this E and you would never play an E on first valve. Um, if you're on an F horn, you'd be playing that open. If you're on B flat horn, you'd be playing it on second valve. Even if you're playing a tenor horn, that's going to be an F sharp and it'll still be second valve. So I don't know where that one has come from. Um, the only other thing I would say about this part is that there's some sections of it where there seems to go on for ages and ages. Um, just miss bits out if you feel you need to. Okay? But if you want to play that, that's totally cool.
The next thing that we're going to look at, um, probably the main bit of the piece for us, is at letter G, we get the tune! Hooray! Okay, now other people get the tune at this point, but it's always about us. It's always about the horns. Okay. Um, noble mente means uh, majestic and um, very noble and, and grand. Um, it's pretty quiet throughout. Uh, we have a multi crescendo, but even that, I don't think you should go crazy on that. And uh, we also have a high G at one point, but again, don't force it, just let it sing out beautifully. Um, there are fairly obvious places to breathe most of the time. The only thing I would say is I'd suggest you don't breathe before the high G um, because basically you're more likely to split it if you've just taken a breath before it and you have to reset your chops straight afterwards. It's good to try and get a breath just before, towards the end. Um, I normally breathe after bar 98, um, but it's good to not have to breathe through the last kind of four bars of this piece. Um, so, but yeah, just find your, your most easy places to breathe yourself. Okay, so let's have a go. I'll count the two bars rest before it. Here we go. One, two, two, two. Okay, now the next piece, the next part of the piece I'd like you to look at is the first eight bars up to figure A. The reason I'm drawing your attention to this bit is because it sums up most of the detail that's in this piece. In the first bar, there are two qu quavers on the first beat and then on the second beat. Um, now, there are different notes on all four parts. The fact is, rhythmically, that is just uh, a note on the beat and then a note on the beat, so you could easily have written two crotchets there. So it could have been ta ta, but the fact that he's written two quavers with rests after them means that he wants these notes a little bit shorter. So te te, okay. The next thing that we have uh, in the next bar, we have staccato on the first two semiquavers and the last quaver. A staccato is when we get a little dot either above the note or below the note, and that means we need to play it really short, okay. The next thing that we have is on the tied quavers in the middle of the bar. There's a little line above the first one. And that's what we call tenuto, and that means that we play that note for its full length, okay? Then, various other examples of these throughout these eight bars, and in the last two bars, we have sforzando as well. Now, sforzando means a sudden increase in volume, so an excitement, so ah, that kind of thing. It doesn't mean go crazy and play really loud, it just means just a, a little bit more kind of uh, zing to the note. Okay, so here's the first eight bars of the piece. Okay, now one general rule with this piece is don't try and play stuff too loud. And the minute you start trying to play this piece too loud, you lose all the detail. Yes, there's bits of it that can be loud, but really concentrate more on getting things really precise because the power from our section comes when we all play together and there's a blend and then suddenly everyone goes, wow, the horns sound amazing. Okay, now the only other thing that I will draw your attention to is just at the very end. There's a couple of kind of innocuous little bits, but they're quite important. I'm looking at the third bar of V and then four bars later, these two similar phrases. Dun, da, dun, da, 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 da. Now what I think we need to do here the first one should be slight, well, the first one's marked fortissimo, the second one's marked 3F, so the second one should be a little bit louder. But again, as I said before, concentrate more on getting these really, really uh, precise and making as good a sound as you can. Um, crescendo towards the second bar of the phrase each time, so dun, da dun, da 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 da, da dun, two, one, two, dun, da dun, da 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 da, da da da. So it's going to sound 
like this. Okay. Now, sorry, I've just seen the big two note S and I can't resist it, so I'm going to have a go at that as well. Here we go. So, there we are. Have a great time, guys. I'm really sorry that we're not getting to see you, but uh, I'm sure we'll see you again sometime. Bye!